I'm going to look at the, the nominations for the Game Awards. I might put this up as a separate video. We shall see. Uh, I'll preface this by saying uh, Game Awards and awards in general are jokes. And they're all just, it's all just like self-masturbation on part of the industry. And um, none of this shit really matters anyway. So uh, getting weirdly annoyed about it is pointless and a waste of time. But anyway. Let's work from the bottom all the way to the top, shall we? Best esports event. Well, this one I have no opinions on because I I don't know. I I'll say Evo because it's the only one I've watched. I uh, <clears throat> I like Evo. But I I, I have nothing to say about this because I have uh, I have no I don't I I only, Evo is like the only one I watch. Now this is esports event, not esports. There's no there's no farm and sim esports event. So this is best esports coach. I have nothing to say because I do not know any esports coaches. Best esports team again, completely out of my world. Best esports athlete, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, all well, that is best esports game. I, again, I, I don't really care about any of this, so I was just gonna, I you know, I, this this is like a this is like a whole world I barely ever engage in. That guy because he's got cool arm tattoos, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, no, I I I like I I don't really play any of these. I, I don't play any of these. I played Rocket League a while back, but I don't play any of these now. It's not in my world. For the game to deliver the best overall esports experience to players, I mean, I imagine uh, League will probably win. I think I that that over Laurent. I, I imagine, I imagine it'll be League. Um, most anticipated game. For me personally, it is definitely Final Fantasy sixteen. <laughs> uh, I imagine Zelda will probably win. I don't know actually. Is it? It'll be. Well, I'll start. Ooh, that's a hard one to see which, which, uh, which of these would which of these would win. Let me, let me flip my burgers over and then uh, I will decide which one. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I kind of agree with them all, but I don't know which one I think will win. Yeah, they um, there might not be, like, so, you know, there might not, there might be a lot of dislike towards J.K. Rowling, personally, for a lot of people. But um, that doesn't diminish people's excitement for a what looks like a proper uh, Hogwarts game, Harry Potter game. It's a lot of people who are very excited. There's also a lot of people who just aren't online and don't care or know anything about her. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, like, for me personally, it's probably 16. I'm more excited about Final Fantasy 16 than I am the new Zelda, to be honest. Hell, I'm more excited about Resident Evil 4 than I am about the new Zelda. I'd be more excited for the new Zelda if it wasn't on the Switch. I know that sounds stupid, but <laughs> Switch is Switch is like it's cracking at the seams though. But then yeah, I mean I imagine there is quite a lot of excitement for Starfield. I don't know. I honestly don't know who will win this. That that is uh Oh, hang on. Recognizing an announced game that has demonstrably illustrated potential to push the gaming medium forward. In what world is Resident Evil 4 going to push the gaming medium forward? Look, I'm looking forward to it, but what? How? I, what? <laughs> that doesn't, I don't feel like that, that, that lines up with whatever the fuck this says. I don't know how 16 is going to push the gaming medium forward. 
I'd, I'd argue Starfield has a more potential to push the gaming medium forward than Resident Evil 4 does. I mean, of all of those, it's probably like Zelda or Hogwarts or something like that. Because, I mean, Breath of the Wild kind of created a new type of open world originally. So, I mean, if they do something like that again, I don't... That, I, what... Like I could see, I could see Zelda doing that if they do something as wild as like Breath of the Wild in sort of creating something wildly new. I don't quite see how Final Fantasy XVI and Resident Evil Four fit into this category <laughs> at all. <laughs> that's a remake. That's a sequel to a series that you know changes, but is relatively the same. It, yeah, look, like, Starfield has a potential to do to push it forward. Definitely weird. Okay. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like most anticipated is different from recognizing an announced game that has potential to push the gaming medium forward. That feels like a completely different thing. Like, this is just about hype. This is about what are you most hyped for. You know? It seems stupid. That, that's a weird thing by there. Anyway, uh, next, best adaptation. Ooh, ooh, that's it's. I'll be honest, with you of everything there, it's pretty hard to beat Arcane. That was Arcane was really. Good. I don't give a shit about League of Legends, and I really enjoyed Arcane. Oh. Oh, you. Oh. Hang on, window's not open for Ben. Do you want to go out, buddy? I'm yowling downstairs. Man. So. All right, so I've actually seen all of these, which is quite interesting. <laughs> uh, so I actually can talk about this. Recognize that outstanding creative work that faithfully and authentically adapts a video game. Okay. Um, I can't speak for the authenticity of, uh, of Arcane because I've never played League of Legends, but I thoroughly enjoyed Arcane. Um, having no knowledge of the, uh, the medium... Sorry, the it's base. That I, I I watched it. It was really well animated. It was very intriguing. The story was good. I loved it. Um, I watched Cyberpunk about a week or two ago. I really enjoyed it. Again, I've not played Cyberpunk, but I felt very engrossed in the in the world of it. Um, and it was in it was good. It was. I I think I think Arcane was a better story and a lot more and a lot more better paced and well done but cyberpunk was just really stylish it was very anime <laughs> it's just very anime that's all i can really describe if i had to compare these two i'd say this one is a far more like a coherent medium um the cuphead show is fun like it's the Cuphead show reminds me of like old like Ren and Stimpy stuff, but minus the sort of adult aspect to it. Cuphead is quite is very much a kids show, but it's um yeah it's it's well done. The Cuphead the Cuphead show is like really really well done. Um, and I uh, I definitely I definitely like it i i think arcane's definitely gonna win this sonic the hedgehog 2 is <laughs> it's fine you know I, it's fine it's just a shitty kids film like it's it's you know it's like whatever it, <laughs> it's not you know there's far worse video game adaptations into movies it's fine it's the writing is pretty shit the jokes are awful every human character is a waste of time there's a whole subplot dedicated to a marriage subplot that is completely ridiculous and waste of time there's a terrible dance scene with Tails and Sonic, Eggman makes weird jokes and flosses for Knuckle it's it's written for like brain dead children <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's that's Sonic the Hedgehog 2 uh, and Uncharted uh, I mean yeah it's fine, it's, it's just a, it's like a kind of Paint by numbers action film. It's nothing particularly amazing. I I wouldn't say it would deserves a win here, but uh like I, I, I watched it and I was like, yeah, 
I mean, that was okay. It felt like an uncharted. It felt like uncharted as a film. Basically, they kind of took bits of diff- of the films and kind of took some of the set pieces and put them in one film. And I mean, yeah, I, I it's kind of what I expected from an uncharted film. You know, could have had better writing in it. A uh, bit more snappier dialogue, but. The weirdest part about that film was definitely that Mark Wahlberg was Sully. Very weird casting. Very, very weird casting. I I put I've, I've got a scheduled tweet going up later that I uh, I think is I think is a good question. Is drag is is Sonic Drag Ball Z for theories? I just want to put that question out there. <laughs> I just I was sitting there and I was like, huh, you know what? Kinda is. Kinda is. Um yeah, so overall it's between these two, I'd say Cyberpunk and Arcane. I think Arcane will take it. I'm I I'm pretty confident Arcane will take it. When is um the game awards. I want to. I want to co-stream that. They're always fun to watch. It's between definitely between these two, but I'm pretty sure Arcane will win. Oh, I said to I guess I said, I think I said is is um is Arcane just Dragon Ball Z for theories. <laughs> Is, is is that what it is? I was I was just think I was just thinking about it. Uh anyway, next category. So yes. Uh Best Debut Indie. Ooh. I've played three of the games on here. I have played a tiny bit of stray. I don't even know what Norco is. What the heck is Norco? <laughs> Southern Gothic point and click adventure. Interesting. Okay. Um, for the best debut e- game created by a new independent studio. Hmm. Ooh, I have a feeling Vampire Survivors might win this. Well, actually, no, I don't think it will. I think Stray will probably win this. I have a feeling Stray will win this. Um, Neon White was fun. Uh, I really liked the gameplay of Neon White. The story was, I think, deliberately very, um, like, tropey. I like, I think, very deliberately. Like, they knew that. That's the, that was the point. That might hold people back from enjoying it. Uh, Tunic is like Norco. I've played Stray. I've played a tiny bit of. Although, from what I've seen of gameplay, it looked like, other than the fact that you're a cat, it doesn't look like the most engaging game in the world. <laughs> I don't know if the fact that you're a cat can carry the whole game. Um, but for some people, that's all they need. Tunic is an incredible game. Tr- Tunic is an, an absolutely incredible game. Like, the more I learn about Tunic, the more amazed I am. Tunic, I think Tunic should honestly win for the amount of effort that went into that game. Like, the man created a whole new language. <laughs> a cipher-based language. And not only that, he created an audio-based language on top of that. Is Matt Tunic is Tunic is wild. Tunic is absolutely fucking wild. I don't know if it'll win though. Because uh I the, the I, I mean like Tunic is absolutely wild. The gameplay is fun, but isn't like insane in it. But uh the act the, like the world itself and all the effort that went into it and the puzzles and everything. It's like the main draw of Tunic. It's really good. It is. It is very much like a new Fez. It's super duper, super Fezzy. Um, and then Vampire Survivors is just like a really. It's just a fun game, you know. It's like it's not technically insane, but I mean, it came out. They updated it regularly up until it finally fully released, and you know they kept bringing out new content all the time. And it's just, it's an easy. You know, it's just a fun game. I don't know who will win this, though. I, I don't know. If Stray does, 
then I think it will win for the wrong reasons. I think it will win because you can be a cat and people get sucked in by being a cat. Um, yeah, Vampire Survivors definitely has been very genre defining. I definitely describe that. It's Vampire Survivors has definitely kicked off a wave of of that type of game, like the idle survival kind of thing. I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of Vampire Survivor S games pop up since that game popped up. They're all they're all doing their own kind of things. But yeah, Norco, I've got no idea. So yeah, that one, I'm that one, I'm completely out on. Like maybe Norco will win because it's insane. <laughs> but yeah, probably Stray. I think I think I feel like Tunic deserves it, but it'll probably be Stray. Content creator of the year. I know who Ludwig is. I have seen him on Twitch. Isn't Nibelian the one that does Twitter game stuff? Is he even a content creator? He's on Twitter. He like posted game things. Yeah, he was like a news guy from Twitter. I don't. I don't know. Ludwig is a streamer who does, uh, kind of weird stuff. I, other than that, I don't know who the rest of them are. I know I recognize the name QT Cinderella, but I don't I'm not familiar with stuff. I don't know who Nobru and Carl Jacobs are. Um, Carl Jacobs part of Mr. Beast. Okay. I know I've I've I have literally no idea who Nobru is. I recognize the name QT Cinderella, but I don't I'm not familiar with stuff. Probably I mean I imagine Ludwig will probably win that. <laughs> I, I have a feeling. He seems pretty popular, to be honest. All right. Uh, I'm going to real quickly grab my burgers out of the oven. That should be like a minute or two. Ads are going to play now anyway, so I will be right back. I'll, I'll start the next category, and then you can think about it while I'm gone. Okay. Uh, best multiplayer. Outstanding online multiplayer gameplay and design, including co-op and massively multiplayer experiences, irrespective of game genre or platform. Um, okay. Best multiplayer. Um, I can't imagine Overwatch 2 winning. <laughs> uh, like, okay, so Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, uh, I, I'm super out on. I don't really give a shit about Call of Duty games, to be honest. Not my thing. That doesn't make it a bad game. It just means that I don't give a shit about it. So I have... I, you know... <laughs> I don't know much. I've heard, From what I've seen on Twitter, I feel like I've seen some people saying they weren't big fans of the multiplayer in it this year. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I can't really say much for Call of Duty. Uh, multiverses I have played quite a lot of and I've been very impressed by it like multiverses uh, is the best platform fighter since Smash for me like I've been genuinely really impressed by multiverses and I still play it now uh, not as much I still play it the only problem I have with multiverses is uh, they just, they're way too stingy with giving out gold. <laughs> it's very annoying. Um, Overwatch 2. I've heard nothing good about Overwatch 2. Literally nothing. It just, it seems to have been the absolute worst launch ever. From like, misbalanced, like, unbalanced shit, to constant servers going down, to really bad battle pass. It just seems like everything I've heard about Overwatch 2 just makes it sound like it's Overwatch 1, but worse, and they fucked everything up. I, 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 I've literally heard nothing good about that game. If if it wins, then I'm shocked. <laughs> I, I, I've, yeah, I've heard... I've Everything I've heard on Twitter from everyone who plays it, from people I follow on Twitter who are a lot more, like, knowledgeable in Overwatch or played a lot of Overwatch and comparing it to 2... Uh, yeah, Overwatch 2 seems like a fucking disaster, basically. Um, yeah. And you can't play the original, so people like, shit, they've taken away a good 
game and replace it with a worse one. Uh, Splatoon 3, I haven't played. I, I, have a, anyone in chat, can can you give me some Splatoon 3? Is it... Uh, like, is it any better than the other ones? Or is it just Splatoon 1 and 2, but with new weapons? Or... Like, I... I don't... I know very little. I have not played Splatoon 3. I've only played 1 and 2. I've heard, at least in my circles, I've almost heard nothing about Splatoon 3. <laughs> so I guess I just don't follow the right people. Um, and Shredder's Revenge is really fun. Uh, it's interesting, actually. These are all, like, big, like, competitive ones. And then this is, like, a co-op arcade beat-em-up. It's quite weird. I definitely don't think that will win, even though this is a really good co-op... Beat them up. It will probably be Call of Duty or Splatoon 3. If Overwatch 2 wins, I, I, I'm very confused. <laughs> very, very confused if Overwatch 2 wins. After every, everything I've heard about it. Single player doesn't really come into this, though. I, I mean, this is more for multiplayer. It shouldn't, anyway. Whatever I'm eating, I cooked wrong. What? It's just a chicken burger. It's fine. <laughs> um, I uh, yeah. So eh, probably Call of Duty. No, I don't. I, honestly, I don't know. Maybe Splatoon Free. I just don't know enough about it. I'd personally give it to Multiverses, but that's just because it's like one of the only ones on there. I'm familiar with best sports slash racing. Do they just not have enough to fill two separate categories? It's a weird combo. For the best traditional and non-traditional sports and racing game. Oli Oli World is a skateboarding game. As you can tell. <laughs> From that thing. I don't, I've never played it. I have no idea. I don't play any of these games. FIFA has been the same game ever since it came, like, 98. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blind pick that one. I picked the view category section, so that doesn't help. I'll say Gran Turismo 7 because I like that name the best. Best sim slash strategy. Uh, now I have played none of these games. <laughs> the, only, the only one of these games I'm interested in playing is Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. I didn't even know Spice Wars was out. Thank you, Marky, for the 55 a month. Don't know why the um, alert didn't go off. Just seemed to be broken. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm a bit, I, I'm a bit out of my element on this one. Maybe Total War, Warhammer 2, 3. I do need to play this game at some point, though. My Rabbit Sparks, I hope. Best family. Well, the only one on here that actually has a family in it is Star Wars. <laughs> for the best game appropriate for family play, irrespective of genre or platform. Is Splatoon 3 family play? Wouldn't you have to own, like, multiple Switches in order to play that together as a family? It'd probably be Nintendo Switch Sports. The Nintendo character category. 
Yeah, I can't imagine you playing Mario and Rabbids, Sparks of Hope as a family. I can't. You can play Kirby multiplayer, but I mean, that game gets really weird towards the end. <laughs> Lego Star Wars. I mean, every Lego game ever that's the same game forever and ever, ever, and it never changes, and I can't believe they're still making them. Those are always fun multiplayer games, so, you know, just turn your brain off and do the same shit every time, but... I mean, I guess Nintendo Switch Sports. I from the from the way they've described the category, I would have to say Nintendo Switch Sports is the best one to play as a family. But, um, yeah, Turn and Ender Switch is probably the only game your grandma could play on that list. Splatoon 3, maybe you could play as a family if you all own individual Switches and you all have different TVs, you can all play together, but... I just don't really see how Splatoon 3 is, like, a family, best family game. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Like... The only ones that even work in this category for me are Switch Sports, Lego Star Wars, and Kirby. And of those, it's either Lego Star Wars or Nintendo Switch Sports to me. They put Splatoon 3 in best multiplayer, which I... Jimmy don't know who the fuck's gonna win though. If they're just talking about what's kid friendly, then I guess this works, but I, I don't know. I think they I just named that weird. Which of these would I play with Dadby? Nintendo Switch Sports. <laughs> If you want to play a game together as a family, you pick up the you pick up Nintendo sports games. It's the literally the easiest thing for anyone to pick up. Like that 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 is that would always be the go-to for a family game. You don't have to learn any buttons. All you have to do is move things in the way you would normally. That's what makes them so good and so good for family things and friends who don't play games. You don't have to know games to play this. You just have to know how to move your body in a way that they do in sports. That's why they're so good. So, yeah, I, I'd say Switch Sports, I guess. Um, best fighting. Oh, now this one, I, <laughs> this one I've seen a lot of people debate about a lot. I don't know why Sifu is in this. It's not really a fighting game. I guess they're just expanding what they can... Yes, fighting is the primary aspect of the game, but it's not a fighting game in the same way that every other thing inside of this category is. It's not a head... It's not head-to-head -head combat. There's no multiplayer in Sifu. It's... I don't understand it. It's bizarre. They must have just run out of games and just should be like, I don't know, put Sifu at the end, I suppose. Sifu's a fucking action game, man. It's not a fighting game. Bizarre. Very weird. Very, very strange to stick that in this category. Anyway. I wish Koshi was here, because Koshi's a lot more familiar with fighting games than most other people I, I know here. DNF Duel. Uh, they're not even supporting that game anymore, as far as I can tell. So I don't... You no. Know. Uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. i pretty sure that's a remaster of an old game. Um, I don't even know if it's that good. King of Fighters 15 is like a good fighting game. From everything I've seen, I would imagine that would deserve to win, And to be honest with you. What's DNF Duel? It is a Dungeon Fighters online, but it's a fighting game, which is an old beat em up -y kind of thing. Uh... I think Guilty Gear falls outside. A Guilty Gear would definitely be here. But it must have fallen outside of this. That's the only reason Guilty Gear could, wouldn't be here, I think.
<laughs> yeah, it's a fighting game, the same way that Jackie Chan's Adventures on PS2 is a fighting game. I'd have to assume it's fallen out of like this, this, the, the scope of being able to go in here, because otherwise I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why it wouldn't be in here otherwise. Um, multiverses, like I said, the best platform fighter since Smash. It's not as, not quite as good as Smash, but it's trying to do its own thing. I, I, I think multiverses is generally really impressive for what it's done. Um, and Sifu. Sifu is an amazing game. Love Sifu. Have so much fun playing that game. Absolutely amazing to play. Just should not be in this category. <laughs> Just very weird. Very weird to put it in this category. Um... If Sifu's not anywhere else, then that's why it's in this category. It's gotten snubbed. Strike came out last year in July. Oh, well, there you go. Um, yeah, it'd be funny if it wins, because just people are like, I don't really like fighting games, so I'm going to vote for Sifu. <laughs> Isn't this, like, part user voting and then part judging panel or am i wrong on that one it's not primarily player voting is it play uh sorry player uh player fan voting player voting fan voting or am i just or am i thinking of um am i thinking of eurovision <laughs> uh um It doesn't matter what else is in this category. Elden Ring will win. Next category. No. Um, best role-playing. If you're up against Elden Ring, you've lost, I think. For the best game designed with rich player character customization and progression, including massively multiplayer experiences. Elden Ring will win because it's Elden Ring. And I imagine Elden Ring will sweep every category it's in. It doesn't even matter if these are great. I just think literally Elden Ring will just sweep every category it's in. Pokemon hasn't... No, Pokemon should not be above any of these. Pokemon was a cool change, but it was still far off from what it needed to be. Um, Live and Live, I, I, I did, uh, disappointed by that. I didn't like that game. I was hoping for a lot more from that. Triangle Strategy I haven't played, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 I also haven't played, but I've heard good things about. Best game design of rich player character, character customization. Yeah, that's so weird. There's no character customization in the Valivus version. I mean, you can change weapons, I guess. Like, obviously, that def this, this definitely applies to Elden Ring and Xenoblade 3. I don't know if this really applies to Legends Arceus. <laughs> I suppose it does. I don't know. Um, best role play. I don't really like role play when I'm doing that one, though. Yeah, I don't know. I think Elden Ring will win it by far. Probably deserves to as well. I mean, it's a pretty good game. Uh, yeah, the multiplayer is weird. Uh, I mean, yeah, Elden Ring is a, is a really good game. Yeah, it's good, but it's not Elden Ring. <laughs> that, yeah, it is basically like, oh, it's a good game, but it's not Elden Ring, so it's not it's not gonna win. <laughs> Best action slash adventure. I mean, God of War only just came out. I feel like they should maybe. I feel like if your game literally just came out, I don't know if it should be able to be up for an award, but okay. Oh, yeah. God of War is going to win. For the best action-adventure game combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. Tunic, 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 Tunic. Tunic does that the best out of all of these. <laughs> God of War's the God... I'm, I'm going off the original God of War, and I'm assuming God of War Ragnarok is basically the first one, but changes. I can't imagine any of them combine the aspect of combat Traversal and puzzle solving better than Tunic does. You know what I mean? I also admittedly haven't played three of the games on here. <laughs> I have never played Plague Tale. I haven't played the original either, so. Um, 
but I mean, God of War will win because it's God of War, and it's gonna win. So, you know. <laughs> it's gonna win again. God of War will probably win most things. It's in best action game. Now this is where I'd give it to Sifu. I'm glad to see Sifu pop up again in the action genre. You just said it was in the fighting genre. Make your mind up, awards. Excuse me? Why is COD here? I have no idea. <laughs> COD being in here is very, very confusing. Bayonetta free. Sure, probably good. I haven't played it yet. Um, I've heard the ending's a bit disappointing, although that's it. The, the things I've heard about Bayonetta free are more... There's a bit too many big kaiju battles, and the story's kind of a bit pants. Uh, but other than that, some people seem to like it. Call of Duty, I, I don't even understand why that's in here. <laughs> Neon White. Again, I is it an action genre? I, I, Neon White is more of a first-person, like... I guess it is a first-person action game, I suppose. I, I don't know. I guess Neon White belongs in here, I think. I mean... Yeah, I get, yeah. It's not like a standard FPS. It's like a yeah. Team NT is great. It's really fun. I I think of these here, Sifu deserves it in terms of just what it does. Sifu is fantastic. Sifu ha controls so well. I'd personally give it to Sifu. I'd like to see Sifu win. Or, or that. Sifu or that. It'd be cool to see the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles win. I'm not. I don't have any VR, so I can't even. Among Us will probably win. <laughs> Just because it's Among Us. Well, I can't be if I'm here, Google the fears. fears. Neon, neon ways in a drama called Speed Run Abate. Innovation in, in, in accessibility. Recognizing software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. Um, I don't. I, I'm not really very good when it comes to this category because I don't really look at accessibility stuff because it doesn't. It's not something that I, look, I think of when I play games. This is like more for people who that stuff it affects and shit. The Last of Us did a lot for. A, this is The Last of Us Part 1 now. The remake, which I guess has all the stuff too bad in. That hymn book was like, was like the antithesis of puzzle games to me. <laughs> I was like, why the fuck would I even play this? I'm just going to look at hints all the time. But from an accessibility point, sure. I'm like, it's like, what are you, like, anti-accessibility, bro? Um, Yeah, I guess Last of Us or God of War will probably um, win that one. Right, I'd, I'd never, I'm, I'd never look at the accessibility stuff, so I, I got no idea. But yeah, I am, I do remember hearing that I think The Last of Us had loads of crazy stuff like that. Best community support. Well, I'm pretty sure Final Fantasy XIV deserves this again. I think they won last time. Final Fantasy XIV's game community support is fucking outrageous. It's kind of crazy. No Man's Sky is still getting updated, but 
the the like the dev support and the dev communication with the fans for Final Fantasy fourteen is it's crazy. It's always the same games in this category every year. Yeah. Um. I always think Final Fantasy fourteen should win because I've never never seen such good communication between the developers and the fans and stuff like that. It's it's mad. But this is about community support now, not which game you love the most. It's even No Man's Sky or Final Fantasy XIV. No Man's Sky, for the sake that they just... St they have st still releasing free updates to the game. Which is wild. But, um... I, I mean, I've never heard a bad thing when it comes to community support for 14. I I would not be surprised if 14 wins. Not at all. Best mobile game. I mean, I'd give it to Marvel Snap because I love it. <laughs> I fucking love Marvel Snap. I think it's so much fun. I'm fucking addicted to Marvel Snap. I play it all the goddamn time. It's also the only game on there that I play, so I'm biased there. I've heard Terror Fantasy is a bit uh, a bit of a disappointment. Um, hi. Oh, you're all wet. Oh my god, you're all wet. Oh, you get caught in the rain. Oh, are you okay? You okay? You get caught in the rain? Do you like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain? Oh, the A's all wet. Um, I didn't even know Apex Legends was on mobile. I had no idea. <laughs> Yo, you got a wet ass pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I saw the video for that for the first time the other day, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is mad. Um, yeah, I've not heard great things about Tower of Fantasy. Genshin Impact I probably will win. Actually, oh, I don't know. I think Marvel Snap's a pretty good contender. It's a really fun one. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't even know Diablo Immortal was out. Oh, no, I did know it was out. What am I talking about? Yeah, no, yes. For those who don't know, um, yesterday my stream just, like, died a, a horrible death. And it turned out it was because uh, Banjo tried to open, like, over a hundred different instances of OBS on my computer. So my computer just shat the bed and died, basically. But, um, yeah. I'd say Marvel Snap, personally, because it's just a really good game. Best indie. Ooh, that's a hard one. I would argue that I don't think Devolver Digital is outside the traditional publishing system anymore. <laughs> they might put themselves as a scrappy little indie div an indie publisher. They are not. They are fucking huge. <laughs> they were going to go. They almost went publicly traded before. I don't know if I even put Anna Pur uh, Purna in a in a in a, outside a traditional publishing system. Of all of them, it's Sifu. It's the only one that actually is developed as self-published. <laughs> but we're not looking at that. It's about which is the best game. So, um, oh, that's hard. That's really hard. Cult of the Lamb was fun. It wouldn't have been as fun if I hadn't been streaming it and had the stream involved. But it was very fun. But um, I do think... I think the combat got a bit repetitive and stuff. I don't... I don't. I wouldn't give it to Cult of Lamb, personally. I think there were better games on here. Uh, Neon White. Um, really good game. Fun game. It's, yeah, it's a really enjoyable, fun game. Um... Kept my interest going from like start to finish. It's got a lot of replayability in it. That's another problem with Cult Lamb. There's no real playability, really. 
Um, Neon White, uh, yeah, kept me pretty inter interested the whole time. Honestly, I, I really enjoyed Neon White. Sifu is great. I, you know, I Sifu is probably the one. It's either this or Tunic. Sifu or Tunic for me. But um, Sifu, I love. I, I just, I can't really praise Sifu enough. Like, when you get a flow going in Sifu, it is so satisfying. And that game has got really good replayability as well. Like, mastering the game and doing, like, no hits. That... Banjo! No, 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 no. I could see things moving around then because you were leaning on stuff. Um, yeah, Sifu is just a, such a good game. I uh, I still play Sifu now and then just for fun. Um, Stray again, I'm not really played. And Tunic, I mean, it's just a really good game. I, d I don't know. I'd probably give it to Sifu, but I generally don't know who's going to win this. That's that's a hard one for me. Probably Call of the Lamb, just because it was really popular <laughs> on Twitch. I don't think it deserves to win. I think it's a good game, but I think there were better games on here. Best ongoing. I'm surprised No Man's Sky's not on here. I mean, I th think Final Fantasy XIV might win this, or maybe Genshin Impact. I mean, I feel like in terms of a consistently good experience, Final Fantasy XIV seems to deliver that. Destiny 2, whilst delivering a lot, seems to, from everything I see from the fans, seems to either be like, oh, this is a good, this is a shit one. This is a good, like, it seems very, like, <laughs> well, this isn't described as a live service, though. This is just for ongoing content that evolves the player experience from their description. We haven't specifically said a live service kind of thing. Actually, actually, I think No Man's Sky was in this last year, wasn't it? So yeah, I I don't I I guess they just didn't put it in this one, but I'm pretty sure it was in this category last year. <clears throat> um, I wonder what knocked it out. I feel like these are all here last time as well. Maybe Genshin wasn't. I don't know. The de the, the Destiny Destiny community feels really all over the place. So I I don't know. <laughs> It's fine. If I, I feel it hard to say like Destiny too, because I ever I hear such like polarizing things every time there's a new new update. Um, I don't know much or anything about Apex Legends. Fortnite is always there. <laughs> I don't know how to describe Fortnite other than it's just always there. It's there. It's always around. You know, it's always ongoing. It's always going on. There's always things happening, and it exists. Um. I mean, I imagine Final Fantasy XIV will win, to be honest. Uh, games for Impact. For a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. Um, I have played none of these games. Does that make me, uh, does that make me a bad person? <laughs> I haven't played any of these. I generally... I, my ma I looked at these games and I'm like, I don't even know what these are. I was a teenage exo colonist. Hindsight, Endling, Extinction is Forever, Citizen Sleeper, As Dusk Falls, A Memoir Blue. These all read like um these all read like art house film titles. Um Yeah, I, I know nothing about these so I can't really say much to be honest. Based entirely off the artwork. I give it to Endling. 
No, I gave it to Memoir Blue. I like whatever's going on there. Best performance. I mean, I imagine Christopher Judge is probably going to win it. <laughs> I'll be honest. People fucking love him as Kratos. Boy. I don't... I, I'm assuming that's Atreus. I like when he says, boy. Give that man the award. Um... I'm I, I guess she's Aloy, one of the main characters in the that game. Who I don't know. <laughs> Immortality? Which game is that? You know Christopher Christopher George Carlos? Yeah, yeah. Tiok. Yeah. Awarded to an individual for voice. Oh, I read that. <laughs> I read that as voice over acting, not voice over acting. <laughs> voice over acting. The man, these people overact way too much. Motion and or performance caption. Ah, he has voice over acting. Um, best audio design. Recognizing the best in-game audio and sound design. Now, technically, this isn't best soundtrack. This isn't soundtrack. This is best design. I don't even... Is there a best soundtrack? Yeah, score music. This is best audio design. This isn't best soundtrack. Where's Pro CD? I mean, I don't think he's going to win an award for voicing a cat in Neon White. Oh, he did the he did the Ratatos thing and got a award, and I don't know, not big enough, I guess. Uh, I'll be honest, with you, I'm not really good at noticing really good aim, game audio and sound design. If I do, then it must be really good. So I I wouldn't even know where to begin with this. Plus, I've only played one of the games here, so I have nothing to say. <laughs> I have nothing to say. I once again have nothing to say because I have only played one of the games here. For outstanding music, inclusive or of score, original song, and or licensed soundtrack. <laughs> Relin Rang is a good soundtrack, but then also of the only of the games here, it's the only one I've heard the soundtrack to. <laughs> Sonic Frontiers is a good soundtrack too. I'm sure there's anybody, yeah, I mean, music probably slaps in that. I don't know if the music slaps in that. I have no idea. Oh, Mel Helsing is the, um, isn't that the, like, shoot, isn't that the first person, like, rhythm-based shooter? That probably has pretty good soundtrack. Best art direction. Give that man the award. Give that to Scorn. That, I don't give a shit about any of this. Give that to Scorn. Oh my god, Scorn is crazy good art direction. How Scorn shouldn't... I. <laughs> it's a goddamn popularity contest. If anything but Scorn wins that. Scorn is, Scorn's art direction is outrageous. It's so good. It won't win because Elden Ring's there. And God of War's there. <laughs> but Scorn... Oh my god, Scorn by far the best art direction. I loved I loved all the statues having sex in the last year. That was great. Scorn was just art. It was great, yeah. No, Scorn. Scorn, 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 Scorn. But yeah, no, it will go to Elden Ring. <laughs> Elden Ring! Everything Elden Ring's in will probably win. 
they'll be they'll, they'll be they'll be knackered from getting up to pick up awards for Elden Ring. Best narrative. Now people have been really annoyed that Elden Ring is nominated for best narrative. And best, and I was saying storytelling and narrative. I really disagree with the idea that just because it doesn't like slap you in the face of the story that it has bad narrative. It's like, unless the game is literally spelling out the story to me, then it has bad narrative. <laughs> yeah, give it to Sonic Frontiers, bro. Uh, I'm not loving the Sonic Frontiers snub here. If if God of War can get a win in, in the awards, and that game came out the day after Sonic Frontiers, where's all the Sonic Frontiers? Uh, where's all the Sonic Frontiers in this man? Give that give this sound give that one a shout to the sound. Honestly, genuinely think Sonic Frontiers should be in there with the soundtrack. It's gone snubbed, right? It's gone snubbed. I don't think it should win anything but soundtrack. I'll be honest. <laughs> I think of all the other games it could go up against, it would lose. I think the only one it would have a chance in is soundtrack. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, um, probably God of War, I guess people will say, because the game spells out the story to you as opposed to you having to seek out the story. If it's not, if it's not there banging your face, people will be like, it doesn't have any story. Best art, best, sorry, best game direction. What's the difference between that and Game of the Year? Because it looks like most of them are the same. <laughs> I, 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 I'm a bit confused by game direction. You just vote for the one you like the most here. You don't. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know how you vote for that. I don't know. I don't know what their game direction was while they were making it. I should do a Sonic Awards. That'd be great. The once, the non-annual once-time-only Sonic Awards. For the being the most Sonic Sonic, I award this to Sonic. 